All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to download and install DS4 Windows so that you can use it to play with your PS4 controller on your Windows PC by having your PS4 controller pretend to be an Xbox 360 controller. And that's something that you do want because that's the way that you can ensure maximum compatibility with all of your games and features on Windows. So let's start out, let's start out by Googling DS4 Windows. Do not go after this first link. I don't know who runs ds4-windows.com, but it's unrelated to the actual developer of DS4 Windows, as far as I can tell. You want to go to the second link on GitHub by Ryochan7, the current developer of DS4 Windows and go ahead and click on releases, and then you want to download the 64-bit version right here at the top for uh, the zip file. We'll just go ahead and install that. Now, if for whatever reason you don't have the .NET framework yet, the .NET runtime 64, you can click on this link up here just to make sure, and it'll take you to Microsoft's website to also download the .NET 6.0 framework slash runtime. And then you can install that, which is required for the program to run. Now, the next thing we need is Vigimbus, which is a tool that allows you to interface with different games controllers. And I'll put all these links in the video description, so if you don't want to Google everything and hunt stuff down. You don't have to worry about it. But if you Google Vigimbus, you'll find it's made by Nefarious, Nefarious Softwares. And this is a free tool that allows different programs to interface with game controllers. This is required. And then we just go down here and grab the latest edition of this. Now, currently, Vigimbus is in the middle of transitioning to a new name next year because of a trademark dispute. So you're gonna have to update the Vigimbus install using the Vigimbus Legacinator. And the Vigimbus Legacinator is going to allow you to download and remove, the Legacinator is going to remove the automatic updater from Vigimbus until they can update Vigimbus correctly. Uh, so that it doesn't try to update from the wrong URL, which was formerly the Vigimbus website, but because of the name being trademarked, they're not going to be able to keep that website. So they don't want you to accidentally get something weird from the wrong website later down the road. So long story short, we're going to click over here to grab this as well. So we're going to grab the Legacinator. And then that should be everything that we need to get started. So first, make sure you have Vigimbus downloaded and installed. So just double click that. Make sure it's all nice and installed. I've already got it installed, so it's asking me if I want to modify it or repair it. I'm going to say no, we're good. And then you can also then go click on Legacinator. Run the Legacinator tool, and a little pop-up should appear, checking your computer for any outdated stuff. I've already done this, but if it had found something, it'll just have a little purple button off to one side that says, hey, we found an old updater. You should remove it. Click it. It'll automatically remove it. Everything will be fine. And of course, if you haven't installed the .NET framework, go ahead and do that as well. I have the latest version, so it's asking me if I want to repair it or uninstall it. So uh, I'm gonna cancel running that installer, make sure all that stuff is nice and installed. And then once that's done, we're going to right click DS4 Windows. We're going to extract it to a file of the same name, just to make sure everything stays nice and clean in its own folder. And then inside of the DS4 Windows folder, you will see a little kind of rainbowy logo for the, the actual software. That is the DS4 Windows. Go ahead and double click that. If you have the .NET framework correctly installed, this should appear. If you don't, nothing will happen. 
you'll have to install it and maybe restart your computer. So once you've done that, I'm going to say I want DS4 Windows to store all of its settings inside the folder with the program. That way, if I ever have to delete the program and reset all the settings, it's a lot easier to do that than having to hunt for it in your app data folder. So I'm gonna store it in my programs folder. It's gonna bring up another pop-up. So for various compatibility reasons, they switch to asking you what device you're going to be using DS4 Windows for. DS4 Windows out of the box supports PS4 controllers, the DualSense PS5, the Switch Pro controller, Joy-Con um, controllers, and the old PlayStation 3 controller. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm only doing the PS4, so I'm only going to leave the first option checked. Check all of these that apply to you. So then we're just gonna close this, and then it should pop open DS4 Windows. And it should start, and it should ask me if I wanna use my controller. Now I don't have my controller plugged in right now, but it's got connected via Bluetooth, so it popped up and it appeared right away. But if you don't see it up here, make sure that your program is start, has been started, You'll see at the bottom, it says start on mine right now because I stopped it. If this doesn't say stop and instead says start, go ahead and start it to make sure it's currently running and detecting controllers plugged into your computer. And then that's basically all you really need to do to make sure this is working correctly. Normally when you'd pop this open for the first time, it would have this little pop-up window that would walk you through any missing software or drivers that you might need. But we went ahead and already told you to install the Vision Bus driver, which I will have a step-by-step -step list of download links in the video description for you so you don't get lost. So this, even if it does pop up, you don't need to do anything with this because the only thing you really would have needed to do was install the Xbox 360 driver if you're still running Windows 7, which isn't that many people anymore. So I'll just click finished. And then out of the box, this program has the default key binding set up on this controller so that it mimics a basic Xbox controller. And this should pretend to be an Xbox controller while you're running around playing different games. If you want, you can edit this and then you can have it output a PS4 controller instead of outputting a, an, an Xbox 360 controller. To do that, all you have to do is, you see how it's got this edit button right here? Click on edit, go to other, and then this pull down menu, click DualShock 4, and then save up here at the top. Now, this is gonna break certain games. Certain games don't like it when it tries to display PS4 buttons. So if it does break, come back in here, and set it back to Xbox 360 and then hit save. So, in case you're curious about how to do that, there it is. You can also use this edit feature to click on any of these buttons here, and then it'll pop open a little menu so you can rebind that key to anything on the Xbox controller, your mouse, or your keyboard. So if you wanna customize that, you can do that there as well. Or you can just use a preset that they've created for you, Ryochan has, in case you bork up the default one, or you just want to make multiple different ones based off of the default, you've got that option. Now, it's worth noting that to make sure that this continues to work while you're playing games, you should always leave this open. This program needs to be running in the background for this to function as a driver to tell your computer what to do with things and all of that good stuff. So that'll be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you found this helpful on how to set up and run your PS4 controller in DS4 Windows. If you're setting this up for a different controller and you didn't check the controller like support on the front little pop-up when it popped up because you were confused and you closed it too quickly, you can go to settings tab. On the right hand side, there's device options. This is that same pop-up. You can enable or disable whatever secondary support you need right here in this window.
So I hope you found that helpful. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. If you're confused what's going on with the Vision Bus driver, because you're like, Larry, I installed a driver, but then I had to install the Legacinator to, like, update it and remove something. Yes. And I have a second tutorial for that, the how to install, uninstall Vision Bus tutorial that I will also link in the video description in case that part is confusing as well. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll catch you later. Bye, and have a good one.